The reason that I use so much detail is because I want that detail to be true to the location. Mm -hmm. um, all of these little bits and pieces go in to create a reality. Just so I'll work with uh, a manuscript and, and in almost the same way as you would if you were creating a movie. Um, so, and these are individual movie stills. In uh, A Fiddle for Angus, um, Budge Wilson was really helpful and she, she suggested that I go down to her place on the South Shore and use that as a setting for um, A Fiddle for Angus. But I thought, I, it's a Cape Breton story, I need to go to Cape Breton and to find a community that, um, the, that Angus can be from. Uh, and Angus, in fact, the community that I chose was Port Hood and I went all over that region finding places, locations like the Red Shoe Pub where Natalie McMaster is playing and they're dancing and they're having a Kaylee. Um, including even the red shoes that were up along the wall. So uh, that is one way I do it. And now with um, Brave Jack and the Unicorn, pretty much worked the same way, although of course you can't find a dragon. Uh, the dragon was fun to do because it wasn't real. So I was using lots of ideas. I'd had, I'd had to research what exactly I made up a dragon, you know, who is the, the folk ideal dragon, what that would be, and also consider what it would be in, in Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. um, now, in that story, I went back in time because I thought f fairy tales, I was, you know, I loved the, the Grimm's fairy tales when I was a teenager, I read them avidly. And so I, thought it would be natural to go back in time to the Middle Ages and to a more European feel. So I used the Society for Creative Anachronism. They staged these wonderful medieval dinners and um, uh, sword fights and all of this. I got their clothing, the clothing for the different models from them, and that helped to recreate that sort of reality.